do you think the viability and usage of AM4 will last? Do you think AM4 would still be usable and perfectly fine by the time that AM6 will come out? So what's that, 2028? <laughs> yeah, it's a long way away. <laughs> probably uh, not. Probably not, but yeah, it, it depends because it largely depends on what AM4 CPU you're talking about. If it's 5800X3D, mm. which is, you know, it's a crude measurement, but roughly equivalent to like a Ryzen 5 7600 or 7700, which I guess you can now include new Zen 5 CPUs and that as well. It does depend on how uh, memory bandwidth sensitive demanding the game is as to how those numbers pan out. But they're, they're pretty similar. I guess the point is 5800X3D is still a really great gaming CPU that has plenty of legs left in it. And the memory angle aside... My assumption is if a Ryzen 5 7600 or Ryzen 7 7700 or roughly equivalent CPUs are still usable and playing the game, then your 5800X3D is probably also usable and playing the game, especially if you're, you know, again, are we talking about um, Counter-Strike 2 at 600 frames per second or are we talking about, you know, Forbidden West at 60 FPS? Because if we're talking about, you know, lower frame rate gaming, then you're almost always going to end up uh, GPU bound for the foreseeable with something like a 7800X3D. But yeah, the first gen, second gen, third gen, so what are we talking about? The 1000, 2000, and 3000 series. They're pretty well out now. It's really the 5000 series, and even the non 3D V cache parts are becoming pretty slow. Um, you're getting like at least a 20% uplift on average with the 3D V cache. So that's sort of that 20% gain catches up to the next generation. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know, it depends. There's so many variables, the games you play, all that kind of stuff. But I guess generally speaking, uh, parts like the 5800X3D are going to be perfectly usable for years to come, I would think. Yeah, I, I would say so. C certainly if it's good, as good as a mainstream entry-level, even mid-range CPU today, mm -hmm. It's probably going to be pretty okay for a while. We'll just have to wait and see what sort of games do in terms of CPU usage. You've talked about how even at 4K, there are some scenarios where you can create CPU limits, even with visually impressive games and those sorts of things, depending on the sort of quality settings you're interested in, whether Comes you're using how upscaling, you how many frames you want. So as we get more and more demanding games, you know that threshold of frame rate that the CPU is capable of is probably going to drop. But if you're comfortable keeping your CPU for a long time and are comfortable with not necessarily having super high frame rate experiences in single player games, it's probably going to be pretty good for a while. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that come 2028, that there are still going to be games that will run just fine on those sorts of parts, especially depending on the sort of other hardware you've got. So mm -hmm. it really looks to be like, you know, that platform headlined by that part, because as you said, you can probably discount the older stuff, um, is really sort of like a going to be a golden platform for a lot of people like back in the early days of like sandy bridge and ivy bridge those parts lasted a long time mm -hmm. and really you were seeing people comparing those parts to like zen plus zen 2 type thing is going oh, is it time further, for me to yeah. upgrade yeah, yeah. um so yeah that's going to be the case i would imagine with this oh. generation so around 2028 we'll probably start thinking about next generation consoles so like what the playstation 6 and stuff will be using and that always has the potential to increase cpu requirements like we sort of saw around this latest generation the current generation that we're in so by then new consoles will probably be around the mark so we'll see what happens there but I would still imagine the vast majority of games would work to mm -hmm. some degree.